Well, here we are again. Uh, the season of Yule, Christmas, whatever you want to call it, is upon us. And many people find this time of year dark and difficult. I have a friend in England who lost both his parents in a short time of each other, and he was an only child. And uh, they didn't die at Christmas time, but he has great difficulty over the Christmas. He gets very upset, uh, you know, because he, he misses his parents. And, for, and that, that's really manifest in a specific time frame. We have, you know, the winter solstice coming up. That's the shortest day of the year. And then you, we have the Christmas and then we in Ireland we have box in England have Boxing Day in Ireland they have Saint Stephen's Day, and then it's generally nobody works really until New Year's Day, and the day after New Year's Day and you're back to work. The part that's really interesting is the period between, say, the winter solstice and say Twelfth Night, the beginning of January. Candle mass. It's that period, you know, like people, we can talk about like the dates are all wrong because of the Gregorian calendars and the Julian calendars, and although that's true, well, this, the overall seasonal cycle is still there. It's still there. And this plunge into darkness is really about the process of Yule. And when I talk about Yule, I mean from the winter solstice to candle mass twelfth night and that particularly that piece between Christmas Day that element between Christmas Day and New Year's Eve where it's that there's a sense of melancholy and sadness hangs in the air and that's important because that's a process we're going through now this is why we have the tradition particularly in England of the ghost stories at Christmas and the Charles Dickens, the Christmas Carol, but it's all just lots of them. The TV is full of these, the tradition of the ghost story of Christmas. It's kind of became the Presbyterian Samhain. When the Celt, the Anglo-Saxon people became the, were basically just destroyed by the Normans uh, with the harrying of the North. Their culture, their, they lost contact with their Celtic and Viking roots. And they became what was just to become British. So there was still that desire for the communion with the afterlife, with the thinning of the veil, and that was shifted in towards this Christmas period, this Yule period. And that's why I call it the Presbyterian Salon. It's the Presbyterian Halloween in many ways. It still has to manifest itself. Now, you have the the closing of the bookend, the chapter of the year, the cycle of the year, with the the winter solstice. The sun is, spends the little as little as time in the sky, and it literally you go into the different world. The analogy to that one in the tarot would be the would be the the wheel of fortune when the clock strikes midnight, and that's really what that is on the 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 winter solstice, the, the clock strikes midnight and the darkness begins. Now, this is where memories of people we loved and missed and died, they, they come to the surface, particularly when people have died close to us. And there's a sense of sadness. This is why I think it's especially joyous to see the little kids enjoying their ties and having fun at Christmas. I think that's why like parents who have raised children will always tell you the happiest memories was the little kids on was the kids on Christmas Day. That's because it was reminded they were being subconsciously paganized. They were being reminded of the 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 joy of life. At the winter solstice they began thinking subconsciously about their family members and friends who died. When Christmas morning comes along, it would be a rejuvenation of life. And this is one of the main reasons parents would remember with great joy seeing the kids so happy on Christmas morning. They were being subconsciously paganized. And you'd have your Christmas dinner and all that stuff, and it's lots of fun. Very carbohydrate uh, intensive, you know, like roast potatoes and that kind of thing. And the American tradition of pies and all that stuff. Heavy sugar content. 
do you drink more? Do you drink things that you wouldn't normally drink during the year? Like people will drink things like sherry and champagne and things they wouldn't normally put in their system. And so the body has a little bit of a shock. Uh, very sugar, it's a very high sugar content. This creates a sense of drowsiness, sleepiness, which is quite pleasant actually when you're older, but when you're younger, it's not when you're full of like adrenaline. It can actually cause you to feel depressed. Uh, then the memories start coming up and this kind of thing. Now, as I said, a lot of the things that people think, we all know that, Chris, that Christmas is a pagan festival in every way. And even things like giving gifts to the poor on Christmas Day, that comes from Saturnalia, uh, the, the pagan Roman festival of looking after the less fortunate. We've been, because of commercial constraints upon our lives since the Industrial Revolution, they've encouraged us to only see these things as one day, but they're really always festivals, including Samhain and all the rest. It's dictated by solar cycles. And last year was particularly intense. There was a, a full moon, a super moon, I think there was, on the winter solstice. And uh, it was like, it, it was like, just it was just, I was just exhausted. I'd worked on pardon me, I'd work myself to near, near debt doing all these shifts at work just to get the extra money because I was planning to travel after Christmas, which I did. This year, um, no, I took it real easy and it's been a, an absolute doddle by comparison. And uh, ironically, I made about the same amount of money, which goes to show you that uh, the whole thing of like, you can work your bollocks off, but this doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get any more money from doing it. All you do is get... A, Get, become exhausted uh, in every possible way and uh, so there's this tumble into darkness this tumble into into self-reflection and this is a huge part of it because often the ghost story the ghost and the ghost story at christmas is the ghost that haunts your soul your own self and it's just why it's a time for introspection basically the concept is by the time in bulk, in bulk has arrived, you have uh, expunged and eliminated all this psychological and emotional baggage from the previous year. And that's the real process of Yule. Yes, we celebrate the shortest day of the year, but we also celebrate in many ways the transference of the psyche into the underworld into the lower poles of cognition, into the subconscious mind. Now, I've been talking to people, and for some reason, ever since, ever since the last full moon, and it's been happening to me, our dreams have been off the scale. And I'm having dreams that a lot of them have to do with underground water, underground canals, and that's, you know, that's, that's, that's incredibly subconscious, that is. And that's, that's the deep, deep, the deep, deepest uh, allegory you can come for your subconscious of mind so although Christmas is fun and Christmas is great and the kids are supposed to have a lovely memories when they grow up they can tell them they get and all this kind of thing and although we hear all these things about all oh, the Yule log is the Christmas tree is pagan and all this stuff the star on the top is Lucifer Blah, blah, blah. It's all true. All of it is true. But they're just cultural encapsulations of human psychological motifs within inside our lower poles of cognition. And this is why Yule is as much a process as it is a holiday. Yule tide. Think about the tide. The tide comes in and the tide comes out. And that's also why you have a strong tradition of, in Celtic regions and Catholic countries, of the Star of the Sea, the Stella Maris, the Christmas elements of the sea. You have the you have stories like the, the storm cat in Cornwall, which is made famous in that beautiful uh, children's story, the mouse, the, the mouse hole cat, mouse hole cat. And a lot of that kind of thing the star above the sea at Christmas. And I generally 
basically, I don't, you know me, I, I don't meditate, but what I do is I contemplate. And I find that period over Christmas is phenomenal for our creativity. Uh, just jotting down, just jotting down notes. You know, just jotting down notes in your journals. And they manifest into possibilities and ideas when the springtime comes after Imbolc. So, I uh, let me wish you all a very happy, and I don't even have a problem with the holiday season, whether you're a Christian, happy Christmas, if you're a heathen, you know, happy Yule, if you're, you know, whatever you are this time of year, I mean, uh, most of the spiritual traditions support this, Saturnalia, and so on, I think Eid is around now, and whatever, but let this be... I think 2020 is going to be a powerful year of possibilities. And this is the time right now to to uh, do a spring cleaning of the psyche over the Yule, to process Yule, the tide of Yule. So uh, enjoy yourself, have fun, but make sure to go a little deeper this time and process things a little deeper in yourself. And uh, as we say in Ireland, Shona Nullick.